the challenges facing the world, facing all the people, are getting more and more pronounced ecologically, including the environment, economically and socially. And all of them are converging. So it is not only ecological and environmental problems, separated from economic problems, separated from social problems. The three are coming together. And the three coming together are produces some very, very major changes. In order to respond to these major changes, some call it mega changes, we need very transformational solutions. Business as usual, ban aid is not enough because the problems are so huge and interrelated. So what we really need is revolutionary. Revolutionary in every aspect. In the way we think, in the way we conceive, in the way we act, etc. There are three important revolutions that need to take place. The first is so-called the carbon revolution. When we burn fossil fuel, it reduces carbon. Unburned carbon or carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide. It is these black carbon particles, the carbon dioxide, that is causing and contributing to global warming and to climate change. So we need to take the carbon out of the energy, out of the fuel. Take as much out of it as possible and wherever it is possible, use the type of energy which produces very, very little or no carbon. For example, the renewables energy from wind, from solar, etc. It's been estimated, everybody is saying that, the multilateral, the bilateral are saying that there must be a carbon revolution. And this carbon revolution entails, involves making carbon ten times more efficient. Supposing we use one hundred unit of carbon to produce one hundred GDP. Okay? We must, in the next twenty to thirty years, instead of using one hundred unit of carbon, we should only use ten unit of carbon but still give us 100 GDP GNP. Can it be done? It's a big challenge. And this challenge can only be met if there is revolutionary thinking, revolutionary acting. The second revolution is material revolution. Material and energy are very closely interrelated. You need energy to produce material, material produces energy, and when you use up the material, either you dispose it, you burn it, whatever you do, it produces energy, causes carbon dioxide. The two, material and energy, are closely related. However, for our discussion today, the second revolution needed is the materials revolution. How can we produce, manufacture, develop new type of materials that uses less carbon to produce. 
how can we produce and manufacture materials that when we dispose of it, it will cause less pollution? And how can we make the material more resilient, more sustainable? There are all types of very exciting materials that are coming out of research and development. And the most exciting principles on these new type of materials are based on observing nature. Nature is wonderful in how it produces material that are strong, that are sustainable, that uses less energy. There are many examples, but let me give you just one. You know the spider that spins a web? The material that is made out of the web, the spider web, it's an extremely strong material. And the way the spider spins the web into that shape is structurally very, very strong and robust. Architects, engineers, material designers are looking at this to give them inspiration and to give them a model. There is a beetle in somewhere in South Africa where there is very little water because it's dry. It's not humid. So water is very scarce. It's in the desert. And in the daytime, it's very hot. The beetle, this beetle, stays underground to keep cool. But early in the morning, before the sunrise, the beetle comes up and collects water moisture on the back. Then when it collects enough little moisture, it tilts it a little bit and the water flows into its mouth and that's how it sustains itself. So the biologist looked at this and said, how is it a beetle can do this? And they found that on the shell of the beetle, there are some very, very small nano particles. The eyes can hardly see it, but on the magnifying glass, you can see that small little spherical. So now there is glasses that you use in the windows that are self-cleaning because it has these small little nanoparticles on the outside. You cannot see it. Even if you touch it, you can't really. But if you look at magnified glass, you can see this. So the outside of the window cannot collect dust or moisture. The moment there is the dust particle on there, when the wind blows, it blows it away. If there is water moisture or rain on there, it runs away. So it's a self-cleaning glass. And you can see it in the net. That and many companies are now manufacturing these self-cleaning glass. So without the dirt, because it's always self-cleaning, so without the dirt, there's always good light coming in. So when you've got good light coming in, you don't need artificial light. So you save energy. You don't have to every month or every two months clean the outside of the window and use water. So you save water. So there are all these types of eco-material, eco-mimicking materials that are being developed, which follows the principles of nature, very energy efficient, very resource efficient, and very strong and resilient. So that is a second revolution coming up with material. 
Now we can have all the technology, we can have all the material, we can have all the money, but if human behavior does not change, it's not much good. So human behavior has to change. People have to change in order how to conserve energy and resources better. Not waste. You know, whether we eat food, you eat as much as you want, but don't waste it. Water, drink as much as you want, but don't waste it. Energy, light, use it, but don't waste it. To help human behavior, in technology, smart technology is very, very useful. Let's look at this room. You heard me say it is using very a lot of energy. It could be going to compact fluorescent or LED lighting. Right? Now when you and I leave this room, all these lights one, two, three, four, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, forty, fifteen, sixteen, about twenty lights are still on. Very wasteful. Still on. We don't know where the switch is. But now, there are time and motion switches. So you can set it half an hour, one hour, two hours. If within half an hour, or one hour, or two hours, there is no movement, the light switches off or timing and that will help the technology will help these are smart technologies and it is it is coming up there are now companies that make you know these these uh, smartphones they have got applications now that if you are in a hurry you drive to work oh my god did I switch off the light did I switch off the air conditioning did I switch off the heating? Because nobody is home. Take out your smartphone, press few buttons, switches off completely. When you come back home, cold, right? I switch it on. So when you come back, it's nice and warm. So all these smart technologies are coming to application, which can help human behavior. So these three revolutions are needed.